Hi, I'm Luis Lo. Today, I'm going to share with you the outdoor plant from Feng Shui perspective. There are many questions being asked, is the outdoor plant have impact for our residential Feng Shui? The answer is yes. There are three categories of plant that should be avoided. Here, number one, we should avoid the giant fruit tree. Why I say giant? Because we don't want the overly large fruit tree. If it is only a very small tree, like for example, you know, less than three feet, that usually will not invite any problem. Why giant tree? Like for example, rambutan, mango, these are considered a very huge trunk with huge root. First of all, this root may spoil our foundation of the property. Ah, that is bad feng shui because a huge root may crack our house and crack our floor. And this is not the main reason. The main reason is when this giant tree were to produce the very sweet fruit, it requires a lot of energy from heaven and earth. Imagine, today the property in the urban city, usually we don't have a very large compound. The most is 15,000 square feet or 20,000 square feet. In most of the terrace house, maybe you know only very small. Imagine, Within such a small compound, the tree consumes the energy. This will directly affect the energy of our property. And therefore, we should avoid a giant fruit tree within our property. This is number one. Number two is a creepers or we call that climbing plant in the property. So this is definitely the no-no from Feng Shui perspective. Why is that so? Imagine the creepers climb around our wall this invite a lot of humid because the root itself has a lot of water or we call it humid so this humidity will affect the property or we call it overly yin so when the property is overly yin they will invite yin sa on top of that this climbing plant also invite a lot of argument to the person who stay in the property so therefore the climbing plant or creepers should be avoided number three or the third one is the porky and sharp plant like for example the cactus or aloe vera so many people were saying hey this cactus is good you know it's to counter the bad energy to counter the petty people is that right this is wrong who say so the person who sell the cactus saying so so that you will buy the cactus the cactus is considered sharp and porky anything sharp and porky is considered bad in terms of feng shui once again aloe vera Everybody know aloe vera is so good. Why I say it's bad? Yes, aloe vera may be good as, you know, a kind of good drink or whatsoever, have medication purpose. But then it doesn't mean that the aloe vera is good for feng shui. So imagine the aloe vera is hard and porky. If you put near to your door, what happens if you fall down? Definitely you get hurt. What happens if you fall down with the cactus in front of your property? You get hurt. You know? So therefore, the sharp and porky plant we should be avoided. That is bad in terms of feng shui but however if you were to have your cactus far away from your main door or you have any aloe vera far away from your property within your property but quite far away that is acceptable therefore i put them under number three and here another question that usually we receive from the customers hey, is flower acceptable from feng shui perspective outdoor flower will the flower attract the bad peach blossom Ah, this is superstitious. So the flower itself is good. The flower itself consider harmony. If the property is good in energy, only the flower can blossom. So therefore, the flower outside or outdoor flower is definitely accepted within the property. And what is considered good plant from feng shui perspective? Beside the category that I mentioned should be avoided, any plant with soft leaf or big leaf a lot of leaf is considered good from feng shui perspective. In my sharing today, I think you have the guideline on how to choose the right plant for your property. Feng shui tips and wisdom brought to you by Louis Lo. I will see you in next episode.